When we're in a complex, one of the things the complex does is the complex comes with its own story. And that story might be really different from our usual story about ourselves. So for example, let's say that we had some situations in childhood that felt abandoning. And most of the time we feel okay about ourselves, but when our abandonment complex gets triggered, the story goes something like, I'm not lovable, no one will ever care for me. And, and it's like it distort it's a distortion right it's not true and we have a lot of evidence to the contrary but when, when we're in the complex we really really believe that i think there's a big difference between thought and attitude and jung mm -hmm. really felt that that was very very important that thoughts are like birds that seem yeah. to have a kind of temporal presence they things fly in and fly out and that they can be precious jung was really dedicated to grabbing thoughts, particularly if they were helpful to what he was writing. And attitude is another level of thinking that has become a belief. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is a foundational thought mm -hmm. upon which many other things are built. And so much of what we do in all the psychoanalytic traditions is trying to create a condition where a new attitude, a new foundational thought, yeah. Could could become present. That's great. Yeah, that's a great way to describe it. Yeah. So we have as our foundational beliefs, we have stories. We mm -hmm. have stories about what's right, what's good, uh what what you're like. We have stories about identity and values and goals and uh, kids, we get told, oh, you're, you know, you're really, really good at music, uh, or you're not really good at math. Uh, and we absorb these stories without the capacity to think reflectively about them, uh, depending on our homes, our childhoods, our, you know, cultural surround, etc. And we also have buried stories. Uh, stories we're not even aware of, um, also known as secrets. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they're just implicit in our families, schools, religious institutions, whatever. Uh, and they've never really been raised to consciousness, but nevertheless, there they are operating in the background, uh, shaping what we do, shaping our decisions. Mm hmm yeah, I mean, they're just, they're just sort of like implicit mm -hmm. assumptions about the way the world is or about yes. who we are. Yes, uh, and it goes down hard when uh, some of these implicit stories about uh, things like fairness and, and goodness, uh, morality, uh, are, are challenged out there uh, in the so-called real world. And so we have narratives in many different domains mm -hmm. around us, some of which are temporal, some of which are temporal, and some of which are foundational. One of the things that we work with so much as analysts is the narratives that have to do with self-identity and coherence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that we have a, a story about ourselves, which is can affect all kinds of things inside of ourselves, and some disorders like a borderline personality disorder, where there is this constantly changing self-narrative, and so the yeah. identity can feel very unstable as mm -hmm. the narrative shifts based on intense moods and what we happen to remember and what we happen to forget. And that mm -hmm. kind of overly fluid shift of narrative can create an enormous amount of anxiety inside of us. So we do need to a story about our past, our present, and our future, mm -hmm. that we are able to hold reasonably in memory so that we don't feel disjointed. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, Jung helpfully offers this idea of the complex. And I think that when ah. we're in a complex, one of the things the complex does is the complex comes with its own story. Mm -hmm. And it's like when the complex gets constellated, that story gets activated. And that story might be really different 
from our usual story about ourselves. So for example, let's say that we had some situations in childhood that felt abandoning. And so we kind of have a, an abandonment complex. And most of the time we feel okay about ourselves, but when our abandonment complex gets triggered, uh, the story goes something like, I'm, I'm not lovable, no one will ever care for me. And, and it's like a distort, it's a distortion, right? It's not true. And we have a lot of evidence to the contrary, but when, when we're in the complex, we really, really believe that. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, let's say that you have this abandonment complex and a friend uh, cancels on you and you, you go into your abandonment complex and you're like, oh, she canceled because she, uh, because I'm, I'm fundamentally unlovable or whatever. You have kind of like an outsized, inappropriate uh, response to it. That's one of the ways that you know that you're in a complex. And then, you know, later on when you've sort of recovered from it, or maybe you've had a chance to speak to your friend and have your incorrect assumptions, you know, corrected, uh, then you might be out of the complex again. You might, it, and it might seem strange that you felt that way. But, you know, Jung said that complexes were kind of splinter personalities. And, and part of the way they affect us is because they come mm -hmm. with an embedded story. I like the idea of thinking of the complex as a kind of sub-narrative mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. suddenly becomes, uh, takes the main stage. Mm -hmm. And then that becomes uh, my story of being abandoned all the time and in numerous <laughs> circumstances. And then all the other acts of the play kind of fade from memory and how mm -hmm. um, incredibly disturbing and painful it is yeah. to trick ourselves into thinking we have only that narrative while we're in the complex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think uh, job one with that, you know, working with somebody in the consulting room or an intimate conversation with someone uh, is to say, wait a minute, you know, you were feeling really, really bad. You felt abandoned. You felt rejected. You felt unwanted or unimportant. And that's a hard feeling. It really hurt. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the friend who canceled lunch or something at the last minute finds you unlovable or uh, not worthwhile. That, that's the story. Mm -hmm. So your feelings are legit. You were hurt. It, you were looking forward to it. It was disappointing. Uh, but in order to find out the story, you're going to have to check with that person, you know, who canceled at the last minute. Uh, you know, what if something happened in that person's life? Uh, what if it has nothing whatsoever to do with you? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so pulling those two categories apart um, after the the heat of emotion uh, mm -hmm. has pa has passed it is uh, is the task. This is what I felt. It's totally legit, and that's category one. Mm -hmm. This is the story I created. I don't know if that's really out there in the um, external world. Is that really the story? Mm -hmm. Probably not. And that goes to that wonderful distinction between an event and a story. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the event is, I'm sitting in the restaurant, it's 12.30, <laughs> my friend said they would be there at 12. That's an event. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, just the way mm -hmm. dreams are set up like Greek dramas, we have a tendency to need to have a story about mm -hmm. that, which of course gives it meaning. Yes. The meaning can be generous or the meaning can be uh, negative. Or the meaning can be frightening. Some people will sit there and tell themselves a story. Oh, my friend must have gotten to a car accident mm -hmm. or that I'm no longer loved or I was forgotten yeah. or some other story that perhaps is much more resilient. Like, oh, right. you know, my friend, she probably just lost track of her calendar. So I I'm going to just sit here and make friends to the person, you know, to the left of me. And we're going to have, <laughs> you know, bolognese, you know, and wine. Uh, but the, the discovery that we can self-author 
mm-hmm. is yeah. is a radical uh, thing. Yeah. yeah, we have some yeah. control, as you were both saying early on in the introduction. Is once we realize that that we're going to either unconsciously author the moment, or we are going to consciously author the mm-hmm. moment, is is a revelation. <laughs> 